Welcome to Draw Studio. This lesson is about understanding the three dimensions of space and how to draw it simply and accurately. I hope you enjoy. Before we start with three dimensional space, it helps understand one and two dimensional space. A one dimensional mark is a line, and we say that a line has length. When a line closes in on itself, it becomes a shape. Shapes are flat and have two dimensions, width and height. A shape that has thickness in space becomes a form and it has three dimensions, width, height, and depth. We call the three dimensions our line systems. Width is always represented by the letter X. Height is always represented by the letter Y, and depth is always represented by the letter Z. But how do we know which line system corresponds to which line? Here I've labeled the line systems with X, Y, and Z. But what happens if I were to switch the Z and the X? Which one would be correct? Now I have tipped the box and labeled the line systems again with X, Y, and Z. But this time I will switch the order of all three line systems. Because the box is tipped in space, it is harder to tell which order would be correct. If there is nothing to tell us which is the front side, Box 1 and box 2 can both be correct. However, if there is something that clearly creates a front and side, or top and bottom, then we need to be specific about x being the width, y being height, and z being depth. For box 1 to be correct, we would need to orient it with a front side facing left. And for box 2 to be correct, we would need to orient it with the front side facing right. The same goes for the boxes tipped in space. For box 3 to be correct, we would need to orient it with the front side tipped towards our left. And for box 4 to be correct, we would need to orient it tipped to our right. But this also teaches us something important. Often, we like to refer to x as horizontal and y as vertical. But we cannot do this because they rarely will actually be horizontal or vertical. Instead, we must say x is width, y is height, and z is depth. However, not all lines go directly on x, y, or z. If I were to cut this box at an angle and separate the halves, I'd be left with a ramp. Notice how the sides of the ramp do not go in the same direction as x, y, or z. Lines that do not travel directly on one of the line systems are called vectors. Another way to say this is, if a line is at an angle to x, y, or z, it is called a vector. So there we have them, our three line systems, x is width, y is height, and z is depth, and vectors, or lines that are moving at an angle to x, y, or z. Now that we understand the basics of three-dimensional space, we need a way to draw it so it looks correct. Linear perspective approximates how your eye naturally sees three-dimensional space. In linear perspective, the line systems converge at points on the horizon line. Even though this is the most accurate way to depict three-dimensional space, it is a complex topic and not the best place to start. There is a much simpler system called isometric perspective. In isometric perspective, all line systems that go in the same direction are parallel with each other. All X lines are parallel with each other, all Z lines are parallel with each other, and all Y lines are parallel with each other. Isometric perspective is not necessarily how our eyes see the world, but it gives the impression of a solid three-dimensional form. We start with isometric perspective because it is a simpler way to draw accurately and it helps build our spatial awareness so we can create convincing three-dimensional forms. And as you might have guessed, when two vectors are moving in the same direction, they will also be parallel to each other. In this example, we can see if the line systems of the form are not parallel, they will eventually converge. This means that the box is not in isometric perspective, and it feels bent, wobbly, and not solid. This is what we're trying to avoid. Let's draw some boxes using isometric perspective. Start with three lines connected at a point. These are our three line systems, X, Z, and Y. 
Then repeat those three line systems, doing your best to keep them parallel to the original three. Try to sketch with long lines using your whole hand. You can take a few passes at each line, but try not to make them too hesitant or scratchy. That one's not too bad. Let's try another one. Like the first box, start with our three line systems. But this time I will make it intentionally out of isometric perspective. Hopefully you can see that this box is a little crooked or bent. So how do we fix this? We use a technique called ghosting. Ghosting is where you go back to one of your original lines and ghost draw over the top of it several times to build up muscle memory. Then use that muscle memory to correct one of the lines that is not parallel. Keep repeating this, going back to your original lines each time to make all the line systems parallel to each other. Continue making boxes starting with the three line systems. Try to make each new box in a different position than the one before by starting X, Y, Z on a different angle. And then use ghosting to help you get each line parallel to the original. If you're just starting out, don't worry about your lines getting a little rough. You're practicing your draftsmanship, learning how to control your pencil and building hand-eye coordination. That's why you should not use any rulers to do this exercise. You want to train your hand to draw nice straight lines and your perception to see if the lines are parallel or not. Fill up page after page with boxes floating in space. The more you do, the better. This is one of the best ways to get you comfortable drawing three-dimensional space and to understand how forms look as they move around you. Isometric perspective also aids us in constructing more complex forms. The parallel line systems allow us to move around a form easily and add or subtract sections from them. I can use isometric perspective to move forward on Z, across X, and down on Y. I can connect the bottom corners of Y with another X line, move forward again on Z, and one more time across X. Using isometric perspective as a guide, I have inscribed a section into the original form. By removing it, I can make a more complex object, and isometric perspective kept it looking solid. This is the foundation of construction drawing, where we use basic forms to help us build more complex ones. But this is also a topic we'll get into in another video. Let's do another exercise together. This time it's a little more complex. We're going to draw an isometric house. Start with a box using three line systems, X, Y, Z, then make the rest of the lines parallel to each corresponding line system. Make sure your box is accurately in isometric perspective to make it look solid and three-dimensional. Next, we'll draw a door and a window using the same X, Y, and Z lines. Continue with those same line systems to give the door and window both a little bit of dimension and make them feel like they're three-dimensional and thick. Next, we're going to track lines back in space. Using a line at the top of the window, go across X, and when you hit the corner of the wall, go back on Z. Do the same for the bottom of the window. Now we can place a window on the side of the house on the exact same level as the window on the front of the house. Next is the roof, but first we need to find the center of the house. Draw a line through each corner on the front of the house. Where those two lines meet is the center point of the house. This trick will work for any rectangle or square in space. From that center point, draw a Y line up as tall as you want the roof. Then, from each corner of the house, draw a vector that meets at the center point above the house. From here, a Z line going back gives us the roof line. But we don't know exactly where the roof line ends. The next part is a little tricky. Imagine if the house were see-through. Draw X, Y, and Z lines through the house to find the back wall. Once you find the back wall, use the corner-to-corner -corner trick to find the center point and draw another Y line up. Where that Y line meets our roof line is the back corner of the roof. Then connect vectors to that point. If you've done your job correctly, the front vectors and the back vectors on the roof should be parallel to each other. 
At this point you might want to darken your lines that are on the outside of the house and gently erase the inner lines you use to construct the back wall and the roof. Last but not least, our house would not be complete without a chimney. Draw a z-line to help place where the chimney is going to sit on the roof and a vector line that moves up the slope of the roof and is parallel with the other two vectors. Y lines moving up will give us the height of our chimney and complete the top with Z and X lines. To complete the chimney and to vent the smoke, we need to open it up. Repeat your X, Y, and Z lines, always using ghosting to make them correct, to give the illusion that there is an inside portion to the chimney. And there you have it, our dream house. At this point, you can lighten up your construction lines and darken the outer lines you want to keep. Even though this house is very simple, it gives the illusion of three dimensions on a two-dimensional surface. And that is something kind of like magic. This is the first stepping stone into drawing more complex and interesting objects. Continue to practice this exercise on your own. Try to make more and more complex houses. Remember, you can rely on your X, Y, Z lines and vectors and use ghosting if you ever get into trouble. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to go to drosh.com for more information on these topics and many more. If you want to see more videos like this, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.